A Washington demonstration by war disabled men of the use of artificial limbs shows the replacement of the adjustable hook by a remarkable new invention, the cosmetic hand. Closely resembling the natural hand, it has movable fingers which are as strong and adaptable as real ones. This veteran has two artificial legs. Just watch him use them. No longer handicapped, he can do anything, even take the girlfriend dancing. His comrades applaud as he proves that there is a road back to normal life for the disabled man with hope and courage. At Dartmouth House, London, bonds of Anglo-American friendship are more closely knit in a ceremony attended by the ambassador, Mr. Lewis Douglas. On behalf of cinema girls of this country who have contributed towards the establishment of an American memorial chapel in St. Paul's, donations are made by Mr. J. Arthur Rank and Sir Philip Water. <laughs> Speaking of American feeling on this commemoration of a common sacrifice, Mr. Douglas says, for we shall never forget the gallantry, we shall never forget the heroism and the bravery of that core of citizens of Britain and of the Commonwealth, who during those days when you were standing as the solitary knight in defense of Western Christendom, uh, they we shall never forget. And may the spirits of those who are dead and the convictions of those who are alive move us closer together so that in the future we may march arm in arm and shoulder to shoulder as we have in the past. On this, the future hangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For others, the road back is of another kind. The great deck of the Queen Elizabeth is the road home for transatlantic exiles. The first notable to disembark into the arms of Pathé's ship-meeting reporter is Sophie Tucker, the lady with the foghorn pipes. Now, Sophie, that is a most extraordinary hat. What do you call it? We call it the lips. The li <laughs> you got any more like it? Mm, I've got some very, very stunning hats. Now, what's the I idea lovely... of a hat like that? Is it, is it just to get the men or what? Well, I don't know. Just something to look cute. It certainly does look cute. Cute? Cute. Next off the gangway comes Benita Hume and husband Ronald Coleman. For a man who soldiered from this same port in the First War, the years have treated Coleman lightly. Mr. Coleman and Mrs. Coleman, we're delighted to have you back in England again. How long have you both been away? Oh, I've been away about 15, 15 years. Far oh, too long. long. Far yes. too long, yes. 13 years for me and also much too long. I'm beside myself with excitement being home. How do you feel about yes. coming back? Oh, it's a, it's a great thrill. Great thrill. There's a lot to do and a lot to be seen in the short time we have here. Are you prepared to make a picture over here yourself? Certainly, yes. If I can find the right opportunity and the right material the right set up, I, I should be very happy to make a picture here. Well, we'd very much like to have you both back here to stay. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> Lovely. Fix it up for us, will you? <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Thank, Thank you very much. Before you, 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 you. All right, John.